Yeah, today's agenda is we'll see how to uh, process JSON data inside Snowflake. Okay, so we'll uh, uh, we'll ingest Snow uh, JSON data into Snowflake and we'll transform JSON to kind of like CSV flat. We'll flat the data from JSON to readable format, like to normal rows and columns. Okay, so so we'll create one database uh, for this JSON. Maybe we'll call it like create. So somewhere something is again again we need one stage uh, to ingest data create stage my stage okay so what we'll do today we don't require any table under we just process the data from stage so we'll read the data from stage transform the data from stage tomorrow we'll load the data into table and uh, we'll process the data uh, anyhow, uh, in order to store semi-structured uh, data in Snowflake, we have few data types. So let me query one of the J uh, table which is holding JSON data. So from the sample data, I'm querying one table. Here you can see J customer. So any table starts with uh, letter J. Uh, those tables are holding JSON data. So here you can see we have the data like multiple. We got uh, so in this table. J customer, how many columns are there? We have only one column. And what is the data type of the column? We have the data type as a variant. Okay. So variant is the data type in Snowflake which holds semi-structured data. Okay. Variant is the data type which usually same in Oracle. We have clob, right? Same like clob. Uh, variant in Snowflake. So this is the data type uh, particular to pertaining to Snowflake which uh, holds and stores semi-structured data. So one limitation of this uh, uh, date column is 16 MB. That means you cannot store more than 16 MB for each row. Let's see, this is like the limitation is 16 MB, 16 MB, something like this. For each row, you shouldn't upload more than 16 MB, okay? So if you upload 20 MB or uh, 25 MB sometimes, it will take because if you upload uh, like let's say around 20 you know 20 to 25 mb of the data once you upload into snowflake snowflake will apply zzip compression and it will come down around like you know less than 16 mb so yeah 20 to 25 uncompressed of data if got compressed it will come less than 16 mb so if you are trying from your end and if you are loading any you know file with huge data uh, if it is taking that that is just because the compression is upright but officially it is the the limitation is 16 mb not more than the 16 mb you cannot upload okay so this is the json file we are gonna upload and process today so small a very small example but uh, tomorrow what we'll do is we'll see one complicated example okay so this is you can see this is very complex uh, complex example this is like very small example if you understand this tomorrow it will be like very easy okay so in this example here you can see uh, start the data starting with curly braces ending with curly braces and again we have an array inside this array we have this is like a first json object this is like a second json object okay see so same like your uh, csv uh, you know txt files json is kind of a one data format you know so json is a text format for storing and transporting the data okay the example of a json string see this is like a simple json string so if you are aware of the python and all it's just like a python uh, you know something similar to python dictionary so this is how you will uh, store the data so see here name john quotations quotations curly braces curly braces one json object so if you want to store number this is how you will store the number so if you have like range of the data so employees this is just like a tag name and these are the employee again employee name age city okay uh, anything inside square bracket that is called as an array so if you have any group or like collections you can store something like this employees colon john anna and peter 
So see, same example here. So this is how the JSON data will be. Okay, so you can see only two things. This is these are just like a key pair values. Here you can see department name. This one. so this is like a one type. This is the example for st uh, string, and this is the example for integer. This is the example for uh, array. So here the array is starting, but inside array we have two JSON objects, right? So we'll ingest this data. We'll see like a. Uh, uh, so use database i just created one database right okay i have a file in stage now as we are working on uh, json data now it is mandatory to create a file format okay so in the last few classes even though you don't create file format it works because by default if you are not providing any file format snowflake always go with the default properties so what is the default file format J uh, csv right so if I'm not providing anything, Snowflake will try to read as a CSV file. So create so create file format my JSON. I'll simply set type is equal to JSON. So let's read this file from the stage. We have only one file. Object, okay. Why we got like multiple rows here? See, 20 rows I got. Uh, we should be getting only one row because the entire file, it is just like a one row to me. One or two rows. Right, so in this case, what we have to do is we need to give the file format. Okay, see file underscore format my JSON. See, if I provide the file format now, it is reading. See, again, you might get question like why I'm giving this greater than symbol. So in the last few classes, so data unloading, data loading, file format equal to, never we never use that uh, new notation. So we'll go with this notation only when you are reading the file from the staging environment. Okay. If you are reading the data from staging area, then this is the format we'll use. So select dollar one from at the rate my stage file format. Now I got now I'll be getting only one row. But can we do analytics on top of this data? Like let's say simply I want to count number of employees. So how many employees here? One, two. How can I write the query? So as we like, you know, how the BA analyst will write the query, right? So Snowflake is offering a good support to store and process the JSON data. So understanding this is very critical because if you go to any project, right, you cannot escape from this. Like definitely, at least like in one or other project, you need to transform the data. This is very, very important. Trust me. I, uh, you know, I was working, I'm working as a freelancer. I'll give support also. See, 90% they'll come like, you know, with this small uh, and silly like uh, processing this data, something like this. These are, I'll say, like again, bare minimum, something like, you know, stage is bare minimum. Understanding stage is important. Understanding the copy command and its parameters is important. So, downloading data, we no need to worry because we'll load, load, we'll never like download. But again, knowing that concept is okay. But processing JSON data, it is very, very important. So, very, very important. I can show you like five or six my project, everything is based on JSON data. Even parquet it is same. The file will change, but again, not even one line will change. All the concepts which apply to JSON, it applies same to the parquet. So if you know how to process JSON, you will come to know about parquet and all these formats. So in order to access the data, see, as of now, I, I don't have any table directly. This is just like one example to show you like we can process the data from staging area. But tomorrow we'll uh, create one table 
we will load entire this data into table and on top of the table we'll transform the data we'll transform and we'll insert the data into other table okay dollar one uh, then we'll get instead of 22 rows we got only one row you can see this entire file loaded into this one particular row okay now our goal is to transform this data so something from this json format to kind of like a flattened uh, type of data okay flattened in the sense from uh, json data to normal okay normal something like our table usually we'll see like tables right so in order to do that like let's go with this select dollar one colon department name okay department name from at the rate my stage so let me take entire this thing. so you can see i got the column output right i'm now this is like only one one value i'm getting for one column so ideally this should be one column second column third column fourth column fifth column six seventh eight total eight columns so i got the first column so one column i got department name now in order to get the second department what i will do is again dollar one I'll copy this department number and see I got like a two columns again to get the third one it is like very straightforward or uh, till four columns dollar one department location right one two three dollar one colon okay, here i'll get null value so department log state department log state you know why um, i got i i got null here it is always case sensitive so if you see i removed the capital s so that's the reason i'm getting error so when i got started few years back I still remember, uh, you know, that day, like, uh, uh, I passed, like, more than 50 columns, something like this, and one of the, you know, in one column, I missed the capitalization. Then what is the side effect of that? I, I'm missing the data, and it took me, like, five to six hours just to figure it out, like, these columns are case sensitive. Because at that time, no internet, like, you know, no questions, no help on Snowflake, because the tool is pretty much new. At that time, it's very difficult. So yeah, now the data is kind of structured format here you can see and but one challenge here is uh, we are getting this data in quotes. So if I insert this data into any table, then this quotes also will be inserted, right? We don't need quotes here. And also the column names, uh, it is like very hard to remember and read. So let's see how we can define the data type. So if you define the data type, then the quotes will go away, okay? In order to determine the data type, so in a table you will def you, you will determine right like you know this is var care this is integer this is string so for this we need to define data type something like this colon colon string okay and if i want to alias this column i'll just simply say again department name so if i run this now you can see i'm getting the column name which is neat easy to read and also the quotes are gone so same way then i need to give the I need to define the data type. So integer again. So this is like department number. Again, this is a string. I'll say like department location. So again, this is a string. Should I? Can I, I think I'm capitalizing all the S. I'm not sure if this will work. Let's see. Yeah, it's not working. But why I got it for... Uh,
department location so something is wrong with department location yeah so see you need to be careful very careful with column names because they don't give any error simply like if you if it is wrong you will get nulls as simple as that so you need to be very careful with that yeah uh, till here it is yeah now this is kind of a structured format right so from json we flattened the data till here so what is the problem here because this is like a simple dollar one colon department name you are getting the particular values but let's do the same for this employee details okay so here again i'll come here at the end comma dollar one colon employed details what is the output i got i got json now array array as an output right square bracket square bracket inside that square bracket we have two in individual json now json objects double seven eight two seven three nine four two employees john and miller so they both are working uh, for the same department because they both are working in the sales department they are both department number is 10 they're both located both of their location is hyderabad and state because these details are common for both of these employees okay so till here it is fine so here is where like the complexity starts so i'll take this copy this code I'll come back here. I'll paste this over. For... Now let's sort. Uh... Yeah. So uh, till here, the, we are we are fine. We simply like mentioned uh, colon column name. We got the values. But coming here, the story is completely different. We got array as an output. So once array is there, right, it is very difficult for us to process the data. So in Snowflake, we have a small function called lateral flatten function. So that function we need to give in order to process uh, that array. So first, let me type the code. Uh, so let's alias this particular stage. I'll alias as a department. So if I alias this as a department, and if I run, right, one problem I'll get is. Uh, okay i'm not getting any problem so here like let me uh, add that function now lateral flatten so this function needs input okay so what input i need to give this entire array as an input okay now i'll alias this let's see what will happen I'll get ambiguous column dollar one because just consider this as a one table and this as a second table, but this is a function, not a table as such. This is a function. So now that I alias this particular uh, table and all, so I need to use department call. Okay, sorry, department dot. So for each and every column, I need to add this department. So what is this lateral flatten function? What this will do? So the challenge, uh, you know, processing JSON data is an array. So whenever we have an array that that will stop us loading the data, then what you have to do? Lateral flatten. So what is the role of this lateral flatten? Is lateral flatten will always take one array as an input. So if I pass this dollar employee details, what will happen? Dollar employment details. What is the output? Array. So I pass this entire array. That means this entire array as a till the square bracket was passed as an input to that lateral flatten. Then lateral flatten, mm -hmm. what it will do is it will remove the square bracket. First of all, it will delete these two square brackets. What is remained? These two individual JSON objects. Okay. And it should give us the output, right? Function means it, it should always return the output. Then what is the output it will return? It will return two individual JSON objects. I'll come to here. Now, how can I access that value? So where, where is the output? Right. In order to access the output, we need to like EMP because I alias this function, right? EMP dot value. So I'll explain what is this value under. But first, let me run this code. 
employee value so i will copy this entire code and i'll run it here so what is this value so here array is there array is there and this information is duplicating so basically like here i have two employees double seven eight two double seven seven three but here if you see only one right so what this function will do the function will return this output in the form of value you can consider this as a variable guys but it's not exactly variable but this is for your understanding and all so value you know if you want to access the output of this particular function you need to use this keyword value you cannot use any other word value okay this function output is captured inside this value so emp dot value you can see what what it does it simply removed the array separated this individual json objects and again it is joining this output laterally with this common data that means this data is common and this this is the common info between these two employees right so it is joining this employee details with this outer output and joining this employee with the outer dot so it is preserving the structure of the output data the outer data and once it got a output it is joining this with output so that is what it is happening in the back end kind of lateral join you can say yeah so anyway so we need we don't require this column i'm commenting this out emp dot value then uh, you can see simple again but my data is not in uh, structured format right one two three four columns were there now the challenge is how to maybe like what i'll do i can type this what this lateral flatten i know like you will get confused and all lateral flatten so lateral flatten function separate events into individual json objects while lizarding the global data okay yeah now emp dot value colon employee number so first maybe like let me run this Okay, all right. Double seven eight two seven three nine four. so here i need to alias this string emp number emp job okay hire date and uh, this is also let me provide this as a string 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 and this should be integer right all right we got the data in structured format now i can get rid of this emp dot value so now uh we run see data which is in json format entirely got converted into kind of structured format
right uh, for today yeah this is what uh, it is very small example 